Hey, everybody. So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to retry what I did the other day. And they say it helps if you see the person who's talking in these videos. I hate putting my floating head in the corner because I think it's just a distraction. So here it is what I look like if I were floating in the corner. I would look like this. And this is my guest room in the basement. And as you can see here, there is no fire detector in my guest room in the basement, which will have to be remedied since my cousin is coming this weekend. And he might want to know if there's a fire. All right. So base units. Here's what we're going to do now. Base units of length are meters. I'm getting rid of the SI thing because it doesn't matter. It got, you, you all need to know what the base units are. That seemed to be a point of confusion. So let's talk about this. Mass. The base unit of mass is grams, signified with a G, lowercase g. Meters, lowercase m. Time, seconds lowercase s. Temperature is uh, Kelvin, not really something we use with the metric system. Amount of substance we do, that is a mole signified by M-O-L, all lowercase. Those are base units. We also have volume is a liter, which is a capital L. Also, if we had a cube that was a decimeter on each side, it would hold a liter, a decimeter being one-tenth of a liter. Pressure. I'm going to just hold you to atmospheres because that's what I'm going to do. So atmospheres is ATM. Energy, as we all know, is a joule. Great work, science. And then temperature is also Celsius, which is not something for the metric system. So here's the big thing. Here's the big epiphany I had this weekend. This is what you need for prefixes. You need to memorize-ish one of these two things. So in this case, the base unit is always converted to one of the prefix unit. So one gigasecond, which uh, giga is, symbol is a capital G. So one gigasecond equals 10 to the ninth seconds. One megasecond, which is capital M, is equal 10 to the six seconds. One kilosecond, which is small k. We discussed why that shouldn't have been, but what are we going to do? That's what we get for not joining the metric system. We could have been on that uh, panel. Anyway, lowercase k equals 10 to the third second. So 963, and we discussed that the reason that we put commas every time when we're making numbers. So like one, you know, one million has a comma every three zeros, correct? I know you just cringe when I do this, but it's good. It's sort of like a horror movie. It's almost October. Um, so we put commas every three places, and that's why these are every three places. See, that wasn't so bad. Nine, three, six, nine, six, three, three, six, nine down here. So that's the point of that. So let's get rid of that now. Ooh, laser pointer. Oh, yeah. All right. So uh, base units. So after all those three, a base unit comes. Seconds, grams, liters, moles, meters, joules. Those are the base units. Then we get smaller than a basement unit. And things that are smaller than a base unit are like a centisecond, which I do not put in scientific notation just to sort of stress that it's two. So it's uh, one centisecond is 10 to the minus two seconds. One millisecond is 10 to the minus three seconds. One microsecond symbolized with the Greek M. So one microsecond because we already used the lowercase m and the capital M. So they need another M. One microsecond is 10 to the minus six seconds, and one nanosecond is one to the 10 to the ninth seconds. So this could also be liters. You know, one centiliter is 10 to the minus two liters. One milliliter is 10 to the minus three liters. One microliter is 10 to the minus six liters. Any of these base units could be here instead of seconds. I just chose to use seconds. All right. <laughs> I was about to say questions on that, but you can't. You can't very well ask me a question. All right. So if this works for you, that's great. You need to know these conversions, right? These are conversions. This is the problem with the last slide. The last slide presentation I did is that we didn't just agree to have something like this. If that doesn't work for you, if you don't like putting negatives into your calculator, here is the alternative. Look at that. See the difference? The difference is the conversions are the same on the top, right? For both of these. It's just at the bottom. All these negatives become positive and come on this side. So you can memorize these either way you want. It's fine. But these are all positive. So now it's 100 centiseconds equals second. Uh, uh, 10 to the third milliseconds equals second. 
10 to the 6 microseconds equals second and 10 to the 9th nanoseconds equals second. These are all the same up here. It's just I changed the ones down here so that they're positive exponents, right? These are negative exponents because seconds are bigger than all these things. That, that's why it needs a negative exponent. Now I've converted it so that the smaller thing is the bigger number because you need a lot of milliseconds to equal one second. So that's going to be positive. I don't know if that explanation worked, but the point being, use this, use this, just use one. You'll be fine. Choose the one you want to use. Now, here's how dimensional analysis works. I wish I knew how to get back to my pointer. I wish I did, but I don't. All right. So dimensional analysis uses conversion factors. These are conversion factors. Things that are equal and change units are conversion factors. So the qualities that change units. One gallon equals 3.79 liters is a conversion factor. It's changing gallons to liters. If you have 3.79 liters, you have a gallon. If you have a gallon, you have 3.79 new liters. They're interchangeable. Just the units are different. So those type of things, these equalities, these double um, unit measurement things are tools to get us from one unit to another. So if I asked you to convert five miles to kilometers and you know that 1.609 kilometers equal one mile, you would multiply five miles times 1.609 kilometers per mile and that would give you the amount of kilometers. See this here? This is the equality. This is the conversion that we used. If you ran a mile, you ran 1.609 kilometers. If you ran 1.609 kilometers, you ran a mile. These are equal. And because they're equal, that we are able to change miles to kilometers in the same way that, um, and we can cancel our units like you do with numbers. You know that 2 times 5 over 2, we cross off the 2s and say that equals 5. Well, 5 miles times 1.609 kilometers per mile, the miles cancel. And now the only thing left standing is this kilometers, and that's why the kilometers, that's why the kilometers, watch this. See, the only thing left standing is the kilometers, and that's why kilometers is what lives. And then we round to significant digits. Since this is a definition, we say it has infinite def uh, significant digits, so the 5 is what dictates this. So we have one significant digit in the answer. All right, so here are some examples. No, here are some steps. The steps are... What list what is given. Uh, it's usually by itself. So here we were given five miles, two kilometers, and we were given a conversion. So the five miles was by itself. That's where you're doing the given. Determine what unit is needed. What is the question asking? In this case, it was kilometers. You have to figure out where are we going. And this waxes nostalgic of Dora, right? Where are you starting and where are you going? I know you all watch Dora. It was impossible not to at your age. So where are you starting is what's given. Where are you going? That is where you're headed. Cancel the units with conversions. You use these tools, these things that go from one place to another, these, these things here that go from one unit to another. Those are conversions, and they're going to help you cancel units, multiply across, and then divide at the end. Significant figures and units need to be taken care of. Remember, significant figures are not determined by definitions. They're determined by measurements. So you're usually going to use the first number to determine these. And please make sure you put your units down after all this. It's the second step. What is needed? Where are you going? If Just write that unit down. So here's an example. Oops, I should have done that a different way. Convert 250 gallons to liters. So one gallon is equal to 3.785 liters. This would be given, so you're given this and you're given this. Now this is that equality, this is that conversion, that's a tool that we can use. So what we're going to do is start with what's given, the 250 gallons. We're gonna wanna, what happens next? Cancel those units. So we want something that has gallons in the denominator. And if gallons is gonna be in the denominator and we're trying to get to liters, where are we going? Liters. Then using this gallon to liter relationship is gonna be helpful. Gallons in the denominator will cancel out gallons. Liters will stay standing. They're not canceled. That's how we can say that liters is what we give the answer in. See, liters. All right. So then you multiply 250 by 3.78, divide by the bottom, which is 1, and you get 946.25, which is actually equal to, which I should have done, 
this did not go through. So that is, uh, we want that to, this is a definition, so that's not gonna give us significant digits. We're gonna use this. This significant figure is from 250, no decimal. So we come from the Atlantic, the absent decimal, and there's one, two significant figures. So this should be two. So we want that to be 950 liters would be the answer. It's not 95 because that would not be the same magnitude, right? 95 liters or 950 liters, that's a big difference. So even though we want two significant digits, we still want that zero there so that the magnitude is there. If I owed you $946 and I gave you $95, that wouldn't be enough. I should give you $950, that would be enough. So make sure your magnitude of the number is the same when you do this rounding. All right. I don't know if that helped, but here we go. So convert 875 hours to years. See, it's getting better as I get deeper in. So what we did here, what is given? 875 hours. Bam. That's where we start. Where are we going? We're going to years. Bam. So that's over here. That's where we're going. Now, what happens next? We need to cancel hours. So we need hours to be in the denominator. While we don't know what we're going to go to from hours, we definitely know we got to get rid of it because hours is not years. So we put hours in the denominator and we know a, a relationship off the top of our head, hours to days. You might know hours to years if you're like that. I'm not, I know hours to days though, and that puts me in the right direction. So hours is now canceled. So those cancel out and we have days. Is days years? No, so I need to cancel days. That's what happens next. Put days in the denominator. Do I know a relationship days to years? Yes, I do. 365 days equals a year, right? These are equal to each other. So I, if I put the days in the bottom and the year on top, I will have years. That's a good thing. Days goes, days goes. Now years. Years is the only thing standing, right? All the other units have canceled. Multiply the tops. 875 times 1 times 1 is 875. 24 times 365 is 8760. That equals, it's actually 0 0.099885, et cetera, but I rounded to three significant digits. So 0, 0.0, this has a decimal present. We come in from the Pacific. No, no, here's the first non-zero number. So everything after that is significant. That's three significant digits. All right, that made sense to me. Hopefully it makes sense to you. Moving on, here is how many years old are you if you've lived a billion seconds? Now a billion is one times 10 to the ninth seconds. Where are we headed? Years, right? How many years is the question. So we want an answer in years. We're starting with seconds. What happens next? I need to cancel seconds. I definitely need to find seconds to something. So I put seconds in the denominator. I don't know seconds to years off the top of my head, but I do know seconds to minutes. That is helpful. It's getting in the right direction. So I can cancel off seconds because now I'm at minutes. So 60 seconds are in one minute. I still need to get to years. So what happens next? I need to cancel minutes. I put minutes in the denominator and I don't know relationship minutes to years offhand, but I do know minutes to hours. You see how these are these double unit things. These are the tools we're using to get over here. So minutes gets canceled because there's 60 minutes in one hour and I am now at hours. So what happens next? Hours is not years. So I need to put it in the denominator. Hours can go to days. I know that relationship. I could possibly know hours to years, but I know definitely hours to days. So there are 24 hours in one day, right? One day is 24 hours. This is a conversion from one unit to another. I use the denominator to cancel the units I want. So 24 hours gets pushed to the bottom. Down it goes, days goes on top. One day is not years. So what happens next? I need to put days in the denominator. And do I know days to years? Yes, at this point, I probably do know days to years. It's 365 days in a year. So days cancels, and it's 365 in one year. Now you multiply the tops. 10 times 10 to the, 1 times 10 to the ninth times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, divided by 60 times 60 times 24 times 365. When you do all that math, you get 31.7. This has one significant digit, so this has to have one significant digit, so we round that to 30 years. So hopefully, you can see here that years is the last one standing. It never canceled. We just canceled our way until we got to the unit we desired. All right. So now when we're doing the metrics conversions, this is a little bit like a freeway. Depending on where you start, you're always going to go through the base. And we played a little of uh, Megan Trainers. It's all about that base, right? 
all of these prefix conversions, a metric conversions will go through their base unit, ideally. Some of you have figured out a way to do it without. It's fine-ish for now. We're gonna go to do some stuff later where you're gonna wish you'd picked up on this, but if it gets us through math, we're good. So same steps as the dimensional analysis problems, always go through the base. So let's take a look here. How many centiseconds? centiseconds are in 45 seconds. So what is given? We have 45 seconds given. What is needed? Centiseconds. We're starting from the base. So let's look here. So in our pathway, we're starting from the base, right? We're starting in seconds. So we're getting on the highway here. We mixed, we missed the first prefix. We're going to go in and we're going to come out in centiseconds. That's the idea. So we're going from seconds in and we're leaving with centiseconds. Centiseconds. Look at that. All right. So uh, there it is. So 45 seconds is given. We're going to centiseconds. We need this conversion, right? We need this conversion to make this happen. So seconds needs to be in the denominator. And the relationship between seconds and centiseconds is either, depending on which of those two things you like to study, one second equals 100 centiseconds, or 10 to the minus two seconds equals one centisecond. I hope you see how that's the same thing. 10 to the minus two in the denominator is the same as 10 to the positive two in the top, which is 100. So that's what we do. We cross off seconds. We're now at centiseconds. We only had to take one stop to get there, right? We only did one stop to get there. We went in at the base and we went to prefix two with Tracenta and came out. So there you go. Cent seconds cancels, multiply 45 times 100 and we get 4,500 centiseconds equal 45 seconds. So how many kilograms are there in 5,102 milligrams? This has a prefix, the M. This has a pref, oops, has a pref, <laughs> should have a prefix. This is key KG. So on this one, we're coming in here. We're coming in, where's my thing? There it is. So we're coming in here, milligrams, grams, kilograms, and that's when we're leaving. So we're gonna have to have three steps for this one. How many kilograms are in 5,102 5, milligrams? So we start with the milligrams, we're going to kilograms. Step one, go to the base, right? We gotta do milligrams in the denominator, and do we know a relationship of milligrams to grams, which is the base? Yes, we know that it's a bunch of these equal one of those. So 10 to the third milligrams equals one gram. You could also put this as 10 to the minus three grams equals one milligram. Either way will work. It's the same thing that we're doing here. And then that gets rid of our units of milligrams. Now we got to go from grams, our base unit, to kilograms, which is the unit of our answer. And to do that, we're going to need grams in the denominator so that they cancel, so the grams cancel. And the relationship of grams to kilogram is you need 10 to the third grams to equal one kilogram. And that cancels the grams. And now we multiply the tops, 5,102 times one times one divided by 10 to the third times 10 to the third. And you get 0 0.0051, oops, one too many zeros, my bad. So, so, we'll discard all those things just so I can fix this. That is how you do it. Delete that. I hope that helps. And we'll be back at this tomorrow and the next day and whatnot. But thank you for listening.